Good morning, my friends. I hope your weekend is off to a great start. It is Saturday, December 16th. Going to be a real chilly weekend this weekend. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've got family visiting me this weekend, and I'm going to see a football game tomorrow. Pats, Chiefs. But I will not miss any episode of this AP Calculus for Response Question Advent Calendar because this is the most important thing in my life. All right, let's find the 16th compartment of chocolate, and then we will get into the calculus. We're running out of boxes here, you know? <laughs> I have eaten so much chocolate. Oh, it's on the bottom right, down here with like the gifts and the bears and all that fun stuff. God, I love bears. All right, number 16. Um, I'm gonna get into this compartment here and I will put today's free response question on screen now. You can give it a look, give it a try. It's a pretty typical applications of derivatives problem with, uh, what is it we're talking about today? Is it coal? I don't think it's coal. Gravel. It's gravel, I think. Processing gravel. And, uh, you know, there's like this plant and it's processing gravel and it has gravel. And the question is all about gravel. So <laughs> I think it's going to be really, really fun. Oh, man. Getting these, you know, these spherical wrappers off is a real pain. Ah, oh, okay. A lot of these red ones seem to be softer than the others. Mmm. Mmm. Golly, that's good. I don't know if the different colored wrappers really contain different chocolates. I assume they're all the same. They all look the same. And they all kind of taste the same, except the red ones seem to always just, I don't know, taste a little bit better. Anyway, let's do some calculus. This is free response question one from the 2013 AP Calc AB exam. This is part of the calculator section. We will have to consult our graphing calculator a couple times throughout this problem. Let's read it. On a certain workday, the rate in tons per hour at which unprocessed gravel arrives at a gravel processing plant is modeled by g of t equals 90 plus 45 cosine of t squared over 18, where t is measured in hours between 0 and 8. At the beginning of the workday, which is t equals 0, so that's not midnight necessarily, it's just the beginning of the workday, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. That's like our initial condition for the amount of unprocessed gravel. During the hours of operation, so from t equals 0 to t equals 8, the plant processes gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. And remember, that function g of t is telling us the rate at which unprocessed gravel arrives. Now, part a is to find g prime of 5, the derivative of g evaluated at t equals 5. Using correct units, we should interpret our answer in the context of the problem. So it's really important to note here that g is already a rate. g is already the rate in tons per hour at which unprocessed gravel arrives at the gravel processing plant. So when we take the derivative of this to find g prime here for part a, that's going to be the rate of change of the rate of change. It would be straightforward enough to find the derivative of g on our own, but since we can use the calculator and we're going to have to evaluate the derivative anyways, let's just use the calculator to evaluate the derivative at five, and then we'll worry about the interpretation. So over on my calculator, I'm gonna press the math button, and then I'm going to press number eight. This is the derivative function. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. What function am I differentiating? Well, I'm differentiating g, which is 90 plus 45 times cosine of t squared, but I'm just going to use x as a variable, divided by 18, and that is our function. Then at the end, we put where we want this derivative evaluated. We want it evaluated at 5. And we get our answer. It's about negative 24.588, we could say. Now, to interpret this, what does it mean that g prime of 5 is negative 24.588? Well, remember, g is the rate at which unprocessed gravel is arriving. So g prime is the rate at which the rate the gravel is arriving is changing. So this means the rate at which gravel is arriving is decreasing because this is a rate of change of the rate of change. So how fast the gravel is arriving? That's decreasing five hours into the workday. And it is decreasing by about 24.588 tons per 
hour. And there is the interpretation written out. We have our units, tons per hour. We have the negative covered by the word decreasing, which is why you don't see a negative here. And we also have our interpretation of this being at t equals five. That means we are five hours into the workday when this sentence applies, when the rate at which gravel is arriving is decreasing by 24.588 tons per hour. All right, let's move on to part B. Find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives at the plant during the hours of operation on this workday. The workday goes from t equals zero to t equals eight. This function g of t tells us the rate at which unprocessed gravel is arriving. So to find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives during the workday, we're just going to have to integrate g of t from zero to eight. That's like accumulating all of the rates of change of unprocessed gravel. So for part B, we just add up all of the rates of gravel arriving over the entire workday from t equals zero to t equals eight. So that will give us our answer and we'll go ahead and use the calculator to evaluate this integral. So again, I'll press the math button and then this time press function nine, the integration function. Now we are integrating from t equals zero to t equals eight or in this case, we'll use the variable x, so from x equals zero to x equals eight. And now I just have to put in my function, which of course is g of t, so we'll type that into the calculator. That is 90 plus 45 times cosine of x squared divided by 18. And of course, we are integrating with respect to x. And we find this is about 825.551 tons of unprocessed gravel that arrive during the workday. Now, part C. Is the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant increasing or decreasing at time t equals five hours? And we need to show the work that leads to our answer. Now, of course, we know that unprocessed gravel is arriving at the plant during the entire workday, and we have the function that describes that. But we also know that gravel is being processed at a rate of 100 tons per hour. So to answer this question of whether or not the amount of unprocessed gravel is increasing or decreasing at time t equals five, let's write a function for the amount of gravel at the plant and consider its derivative. So here for part C, I said we would write a function for the amount of gravel. I should have just said name a function. Say we call it A. The amount of unprocessed gravel at the processing plant is A. So then what is A prime, the change in the amount of unprocessed gravel? Well, certainly it would have to be G of T, the amount of unprocessed gravel that is arriving at the plant, but then minus 100, which is the amount of gravel being processed each hour. Then to answer part C, we have to figure out what A prime of five is. If this is positive, that means the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant is increasing. If it's negative, then the amount of unprocessed gravel is decreasing. A prime of five, of course, is going to be G prime of five minus zero. So, all that we really have to determine is if the derivative of g is positive or negative at t equals five. I'll just go ahead and erase the minus zero. We don't really need that. Let's open up the calculator. So to answer part c, we will plug t equals five into a prime. This of course is going to be g of five minus 100. Is this positive or is it negative? Well, let's open up the calculator and get a value for g of five. So here again, I'll just type in our function, but plug in five. So 90 plus 45 times cosine of five squared, so 25, divided by 18. And this is about 98.141. So a prime of five is going to be about 98 point one four one minus one hundred this number of course is negative it is less than zero and this means that the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant is decreasing five hours into the workday and again that's because we know that the derivative of the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant is the rate at which unprocessed gravel arrives minus the rate at which it is processed. And when we plug in five, we get a negative. So the amount of unprocessed gravel is decreasing at this time. Moving on to part D, the final part. What is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during the hours of operation 
on this workday and we need to justify our answer. Now, since we're talking about this workday, T is between zero and eight. So we basically will have to conduct a candidates test. We'll have to plug in zero, plug in eight, and then use our derivative to find critical points. And if there are any critical points, we'll have to plug those in as well and see where the function is maximized. At what time is the amount of unprocessed gravel the highest? Now for part D, we will actually need to figure out what our function A of T, the amount of unprocessed gravel at time T is. And that's pretty straightforward. The amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant at time t is 500, which is the starting amount of unprocessed gravel that was given to us in the question that, what do we have right here at the beginning of the workday, t equals zero, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. So it's 500, that initial value, plus the integral of g of s minus 100. So that's the rate at which the amount of unprocessed gravel changes we have to integrate that amount from zero to t. That way we get the starting amount 500 plus whatever the accumulated changes from zero to t, that will tell us what the actual amount of unprocessed gravel is at time t. Take that starting amount and accumulate the change up to time t. Although again, this only applies on this closed interval from zero to eight. Now we already know the derivative a prime of t is g of t minus 100. And we need to set this equal to zero to find critical points. There are no critical points where the derivative doesn't exist because g of t exists for all values of t on this closed interval. There's no forbidden value that we can't plug into cosine. So to find the critical points where this derivative equals zero, we will plug it into our calculator. So I just pressed y equals to get here where I can put in a function and then we can graph it and see where it hits zero in the interval that we're interested in. So we've got 90 plus 45 times cosine of x squared, again, we're just using x instead of t for convenience, divided by 18, that is g of t, but remember we also have to subtract 100, that's the rate at which gravel is being processed. All right, now let's press the graph button and take a look at the graph. I'll have to zoom out to make sure we can get a good view here. And let's scroll over to the positive X values. And here we can see is where it passes zero on the interval we're actually interested in. It passes zero again over here, but that's after T equals eight. That's after the end of the workday. That is not important for us. It's only this zero that's important for us where T is about 4.923. All right, now we have all of our candidates, the endpoints of the interval zero and eight and the one critical point we just found. We need to evaluate the A function, the amount of unprocessed gravel at each of these times and see which one is maximum. A of zero, we already know that was given to us as 500. As for the other two, A of the critical point and A of eight, we are going to need our definition of A using the integral here in order to figure those out. And so we'll have to consult the calculator once more. All right, I did this calculation once, but forgot to subtract the 100. Now you can see in my calculator, I got the minus 100 in the integral and our answer for the amount of unprocessed gravel at this critical point time is about 635.376 tons. And I can just press second entry in order to get this integral again and just go edit the upper bound. The upper bound now we need to change to eight to find the amount of unprocessed gravel at t equals eight. And we get about 525.551 tons. So again, all of this was found using the function we wrote for the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant at time t. And the logic behind this is that we're taking that initial amount of unprocessed gravel, 500 at t equals zero, and then adding the accumulation of the rate of change of unprocessed gravel from zero to t, the time that we are interested in. All right, now we have evaluated our function a at all of the candidates. And thus we can make our conclusion. We see the maximum amount was 635.376. So our conclusion is that the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during this workday was 635.376 tons, which occurred about 4.9234 
hours into the workday. And that completes our solution for free response question one from the 2018, or excuse me, 2013 AP Calculus AB exam. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Be sure to check out my Calculus One exercises playlist in the description for over a hundred other calculus exercises that aren't all a bunch of free response questions but the free response questions are very fun. So make sure you check out the full advent calendar playlist and come back tomorrow for the next episode with another free response question. Hope you're having a great December. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.